<laughs> and welcome to Coffee and Connect. Mm -hmm. So, I'm here with Brandy. You want to say hi? You want to say hi? No, you're sleepy. I'm just taking a bath. Um, ben is in the other window hanging out. Um, I am a little groggy today. A little tired today. Uh, whenever I feel a little sluggish, I like to blame the planets because that's <laughs> that's what I do. So, um, happy solstice, happy cancer season, happy eclipse. Uh, we've got what's today, the twenty first. I think we've got four more days of Venus retrograde. So. I hope that you guys have had some lovely, enlightening lessons of levelings around love, worth, value, uh, relationships, money, self-worth, self-love. Um, we just entered Mercury Retrograde and um, Mercury Retrograde gets a bad rap. Uh, it's not all about... Um, you know, our phone's not working, our internet not working. Um, I read some interesting information that, uh, because Mercury is the closest planet to us, um, it's got the tightest, shortest orbit. Um, and so because of the proximity it has to us, like it can affect our electromagnetic field here, which is why it affects, um, you know, uh, technology, devices, travel, things like that. Um, yeah, it's in cancer. So, uh, if you notice that you are a little bit more emotional, a lot more emotional, it could be from that, especially if it's around the way that like you communicate, learn, process things. Uh, it could also be because it's cancer season, which is the season of the feels, my season <laughs> I'm the cancer. Um, and I definitely feel like I am, um, you know how like at the end of the year, like the end of the calendar year, it's like things have kind of slowed down and, you know, we're kind of getting ready for a new year. Like you, um, kind of clean things out or you're like taking a lot of time to rest. I definitely feel like, um, I am kind of in this phase of like trying to wrap things up. Uh, and it's been really, um, a lot with like my home, like I'm doing a lot of kind of organizing, which is very much like Venus and retrograde. Um, just kind of, uh, like I've been doing a lot of gardening and like landscaping. I was like breaking down like cardboard boxes, um, because I've got, I still have like really big boxes from when I moved that like don't fit in the recycling thing. So like having to actually like cut them, you know, and break them down into smaller pieces and just, um kind of enjoying doing that, like enjoying the process of kind of wrapping things up, like uh, bringing things to kind of conclusion as I end my 39th year of life and come into my 40th year, which I'm really excited for, uh, because numerology, numerologically, <laughs> I feel like it's, it's kind of like I'm having like a geek moment, but like, you know, um, we're in a four universal year. 40, four plus zero is a four. So it just, to me, it just really feels like this is, uh, the time when I'm like kind of coming into my own personal alignment with like who I am I'm getting really grounded and secure and stable in who I am which as a water sign like that's uh, that's been the work of my life <laughs> is balancing out like those watery emotions with um, a really kind of strong sense of you know um, who I am and what I like and what I don't like and I am I'm so sorry for that I didn't realize that there's a little bit of uh, x-rated stuff going on back there. <laughs> okay. On that note, we will, she's just living her best life. We will get into um, the card reading. So this week, I wanted to offer you three different readings. Uh, this is not really like a pick a card. It's just something kind of more lighthearted that I felt called to do. So this is going to be a love, joy, and happiness reading. So the first reading is about love. Second reading is about joy. Third reading is about happiness. So if you would like to read, uh, to read, if you'd like to watch all of them, if you feel like uh, one of those really speaks to you, um, 
you know, I will put the timestamps below. You can skip ahead to the one that is most appealing to you if that's the case. Um, but yeah, I'm going to use uh, one Oracle and one um, tarot deck as usual. Uh, for each reading, I have a different set. So each reading will have a different tarot and oracle combination. And on that note, I just like messing with her because she woke me up at 5 a.m. this morning on a Sunday. Not my favorite thing. Okay, so let's get into it. So for the love reading, oops, I will be, uh, or I pulled cards from the Tarot Mucha and the Power of Love Oracle. I just feel like this, this deck is like very kind of like romantic. Like the imagery is very like romantic and um, just really pretty. And love, duh. <laughs> so the first card that I pulled for the love reading is the Hanged Man card. So um, <laughs> this is a major arcana card. This is... It's the number 12 card. One plus two is three. Um, three is a number of joy, celebration, creativity. So uh, there's not always like a super positive connotation about the hangman because um, I think the initial reaction is being upside down, being kind of stuck, being trapped. But, you know, we can see the imagery of like this really bright light around his head. He's got his hands behind his back. Um, and we can see see if I can zoom or get this in for you we can see that there's like a rope here around his arm can't see the other arm we can also deduce that this rope is actually what's keeping him connected to this tree and you know we can see this tree is really strong you know that um he's not gonna fall down um also both of his legs aren't bound just like with this other hand we can't see if both of them are bound so the thing with the Hanged Man card is that it feels like we're stuck. It feels like we're trapped. It feels like we got put into the situation that we don't really like. But in actuality, we have a choice. So we are choosing to pause. We're choosing to slow down. We're choosing to take the time to reflect. And so this is the love reading. So if you have been in a hurry to fall in love, um, to find a relationship to, you know, now that a lot of places are coming out of quarantine, you know, it's like you can go to restaurants, you can start dating again. Um, this card is really encouraging you to kind of reflect on um, why you're being paused. Why are you choosing to pause and understanding that you have complete control of this pause. And that, you know, once you get clear on what it is that you want, like really, really clear on what you want, um, that you know, this, this positivity, this light, this three energy, happiness, joy, fun is going to come in. I'm really harping on knowing what it is that you want in relationship because you have the power to attract, to draw in whatever it is that you're setting intentions for. The tricky part of this is that we can have subconscious intentions and we can have conscious intentions. So there's t intentions that we are unaware of and then there's t intentions that we are aware of. And so um, relationships can be our biggest teacher. So if we come into relationship with someone not understanding that um, relationship is someone else reflecting things back to us, that relationship is learning lessons about ourselves and how we interact with others, um, we can play out you know, um, kind of old unresolved trauma excuse me. So if you've, <laughs> if you've heard the, the phrase like, um, dating the same person with a different face, um, this is very much like playing out unresolved trauma. If you, um, are consistently having problems in relationship <clears throat> and there are similar problems, like if there's just like a lot of conflict, if there's a lot of arguments, if there's a lot of trust issues, um, really reflecting on that and being aware of, you know, um, not, not necessarily only setting the intentions of what you want in relationship, but being aware and like getting still going within and realizing like, okay, I consistently have had trust issues in relationships. What do I need to trust someone else? Like what 
qualities, characteristics do I need to see from another person that will indicate to me that it is safe to trust? So, you know, hangman isn't like, um, it's not like superficial, like quick, make a list of what it is that you want um, in a partner as far as like, you know, like athletic or like blue eyes or whatever. Like this is really kind of deep work of identifying characters, qualities, feelings, like things you want to feel from another when you enter into relationship. So that was the first card. Again, the second card that I have for you is the seven of pentacles. And so this card is really about gathering energy and like doing work. You know, seven is a number of spirituality of intuition. Um, you know, and this being part of the love reading, like healthy relationships, like whether they're long-term, short-term friendships, intimate relationships, like they take a certain amount of work. So if you are not ready to put forth the effort um, that is required for relationship, I would really encourage you to <laughs> return to this time of like inner reflection and ask why it is you want to enter into a relationship. You know, um, if you have a fantasy that, you know, you're looking for your happily ever after, but you don't want to do happily ever after level work, um, you might want to go back to the drawing board and figure out what you really want. And, and there's nothing wrong with like changing what you want. Like you might just want a, a really kind of casual relationship where, you meet someone for like once a week and you guys hang out or you go out to dinner or you have an activity that you do. But um, this is really encouraging you to identify how much energy, effort, time, work do you want to put into a relationship? Um, and if you don't want to put any in, does it match what you're trying to draw in or manifest? The third card that I have for you is the King of Pentacles. And so this card is, um, you know, with, uh, oh, no, nope, that's not a king. Sorry. <laughs> that is the Knight of Pentacles. Uh, knights are about action, you know, and Pentacles typically are about money. But um, to me, this feels, because it's a love reading, it feels much more about um, energy. Uh, unless you're at the point where you want to pay for, like, a dating app matchmaking services like if you have the financial ability to pay for um some kind of dating service um because i mean some some sites are like free but like you know some sites you're paying money to get extra whatever um just like with a matchmaker like it, it's it, you're paying money <laughs> to have someone match you with someone else and so if that's the case like this card is saying, go ahead and take action. Knights are about action. Like, go ahead and invest that money. Um, but also, you know, if um, if you really reflected on wanting to be in a relationship, if you're ready to put the work in, like, now is the time to do it. Now is the time to go. So if you are, are dating someone right now and you are kind of on the fence, you're kind of unsure about whether you should invest a little bit more time, energy, um, emotion with that person, this is a positive card. For that um, yeah this is the you're getting the go ahead to take action so you know uh, you've gotten clear on what it is that you want to draw in you're ready to do the work um, either within or in the relationship as well and so now's the time to take action the power of love card that I pulled for you is the friendliness card and so this says you are able to recognize traits in common with another in order to forge love-based connections. So um, this tells me that, you know, um, this isn't really a time for superficial relationships. Like if you're dating just to date, uh, if you're dating just to get someone to get you out of the house, if you're dating just to fill a void, if you're dating just to have someone buy you dinner, this is not the time. Like this, to me, like the friendliness, you know, as well as like forging love-based connections like this is very much about like partnership um committed relationship you know if you are currently partnered if you're currently in a relationship um this might sound weird but being a friend to the person that you're dating being a friend to your partner like really looking at um 
how you are towards them. I think that one of the really interesting things about the way that relationships are portrayed in um, the media, like television, TV shows, is that they, especially in um, heterosexual relationships, they are very adversarial. It's very much, you know, him versus her. And, you know, I think we've all had an experience where you have that couple that you know and you know they do not like each other. They are not friends. <laughs> like you can tell, you know, and speaking from personal experience, I've had a lot of relationships where I wasn't friends with who I was dating. You know, I was just attracted to them or just wanted to be in the relationship. But, you know, a couple months into it, I realized like, I don't really even like this person. We don't have the same values, which is what dating is for. But, you know, it's very hard to have committed long-term relationship when you don't have that friendship as a base. So if you were in a relationship, you know, this is just kind of a call to remember to, um, not even remember, to focus on that friendship in the relationship right now. If things have been kind of strained, if things have been, there's a little bit of irritability, you know, uh, mercury retrograde, cancer season, some people don't handle all the feels very well. Um, just trying to be a friend to your partner, a friend to whoever you're dating, you know, and treating them the way that we would treat a friend. Like we, when we have a friend that has a bad day that doesn't need us to fix anything, what can we offer them? You know, we can offer them time and space to deal with what they're dealing with and just letting them know, hey, I'm going to be here. Like I'm here whenever you need me. And if you don't need me, it's okay. I'm not going to be upset because I think that sometimes in relationships we can get kind of enmeshed where it's like, okay, your problem is my problem. Uh, and this is just reminding us that, you know, um, as partners in committed relationship, that friendship is very important. Uh, if you are looking for a relationship right now, like, again, this isn't really the time for a superficial relationship. So that was the love reading. Next is the joy reading. And so I pulled cards from the Lightseer's Tarot and the Power of Surrender Oracle deck. So the first card I have for the joy reading is Two of Pentacles. So uh, this card is really um, not about balance uh, as much as it is about balancing, if that makes sense. So um, I think there's a difference between trying to strike a balance between things, like that feels very static, you know, like a scale. You know, that you want to find that um, kind of equilibrium where we stop things from tipping. Like, this feels much more dynamic, like striking a balance, like maintaining a balance. Well, not even maintaining, striking a balance. Like, being very aware of, like, what goes here and what goes here. Um, and knowing that these things shift. And it's almost like if you can imagine a scale... You know, that this is the scale and that, you know, it, this is an act of putting a little bit here and seeing how this goes up and putting a little bit here and like always being aware that this scale is in, in, in motion. So that's what I mean by dynamic. It's always moving. And so this is calling us to understand that like to find our joy, we, we have to stay active. We have to stay engaged because the things that take joy away from us are always moving. You know, it's not, um, it's kind of like a bank account where it's like, there's hopefully there's always money coming in, just like there's always money going out, you know, and that like, you don't balance your budget and like, you just do it once a month and everything stays the same. Like it's all, it's always in motion. It's very dynamic. You know, pentacles are about, uh, time, money, energy. And so to find our joy, we need to really take stock on a regular basis, almost like monitoring how we are balancing what we have to do with what we love to do, you know? And I think that, you know, that is really what helps us to maintain joy. If we're always doing what we have to do, you know, and we're not really balancing out with what we love to do, it creates this really significant impact. And so, you know, all work and no play is it's not good it's in balance so this was the first card of the joy reading the next card is three of pentacles so first we have the two now we have the three um and something else that can bring you joy is um creativity engaging with other people connecting 
um, sharing. You know, if you are someone that really enjoys your solitude or you're an introvert, like you can find ways to be creative. You know, you can find ways to connect with other people at uh, a, a distance that makes you comfortable. So this might be something like um, joining a Facebook group, you know, um, this might be something like having more video calls, doing like a group video call with friends, you know, that maybe um, you aren't able to get together because um, you're choosing to do social distancing for your own health, or you might not be in the same place, you know, and you just make, meet, miss your people and you want to get together, you want to meet up with them. Um, this could also be something in person. This could be collaborating on like a creative project. And I feel like this is very heavy in the creativity because of the three. You know, and just, you know, they're kind of putting together this tapestry, like, um, you know, he's holding it, she's doing a lot of the knitting, you know, and she's really just observing and enjoying, like, you know, like touching it, experiencing it. Um, so, you know, connecting with others, connecting with your creativity um, are, are other things that can bring you joy. So these are things you're being encouraged to do. The third card in the um, joy reading is a reversal. It's the Nine of Swords. And so this card is calling us to let our guard down. The upright version, she's very vigilant. You know, she's got this, uh, this fence that's up. She's got her staff with a light on it so she can see, as we can see, like the sun's kind of going down. Like it looks like, yeah, it looks like kind of dusk is approaching and, you know, she is on guard. She's ready in case something bad happens. The reversal is saying that it's, it's safe to let your guard down. Like if you've had problems in the past with um, collaborating with people, with interacting with people, making friends with groups, like the, this is the thing that's going to bring you joy now, you know, and it's safe to let your guard down. That. The people that you're going to be drawing in, these friends that you're drawing in, these new people you're interacting with, they're safe. But also, you've done the work, you know, to not necessarily fortify yourself, but like your trust in yourself is fortified. So you know, like you've got this, this light of truth, you've got, you know, this healthy boundary that you've developed um, and you can trust yourself to let your guard down because you've learned enough, you've experienced enough that when people come who are not for your highest good, there's no problem for you to put up this boundary. You know, the light of your knowledge is bright enough, it shines far enough that, you know, if you see people approaching that are not good people, you know how to protect yourself so it's it's safe to put those uh, put your guard down to bring those walls down um, and you know this is always at the level that feels safest for you but if you are a highly guarded person uh, maybe just lower your wall a couple inches <laughs> just a little bit I'm not saying put the whole wall down uh, what I am saying is that it's safe to let your guard down at the level that is most comfortable for you and this will allow you know, people to come in, this will allow connection to happen. Uh, and this, this will allow more joy to come into your life. The surrender card that I pulled for you is, I'll show it to you again after I read it. Surrender to your intuition, tune into your inner voice, be aware of any gut feelings, flashes, knowings, or aha moments that come through to guide you. So sorry for the glare. Um, and again, you know, I feel like that really um, is reinforcing this message that it's safe to let your guard down because you trust your intuition enough that you can now surrender to it. Where you were before, where you were very guarded, you know, um, there was a lack of trust in self. There's a lack of trust in, in your knowing your abilities um, your experiences, but because you've grown so much, because you've learned how to establish these healthy boundaries, because you know what trustworthy people look like and don't look like, you know, it's safe to let your guard down as much as you're comfortable, and it's safe to surrender to your intuition. It's safe to trust yourself. It's safe to trust your gut. So that was your reading for joy. 
the third reading is the happiness reading. So of course, I use happy tarot. I mean, ooh, that's bright. <laughs> and uh, the super attractor deck. So the first card I have for you from the happy tarot is the 10 of wands. So um, wands are about action. Uh, <laughs> and as we can see, this little guy is doing too much. <laughs> so the way to happiness is to really determine what it is that you need to be carrying and what you can put down. What it is that you need to be doing and what you don't have to do because you don't have to do everything even though I know you feel like you have to do everything and your brain is telling you you have to do everything and there might be people in your life that are giving you the impression that you have to do everything. This card is giving you permission. No, this card is <laughs> in a really gentle, playful way directing you that, you know, if you don't put things down, you're not going to see where you're going. And like, he's kind of going down, like this hill slopes down, you know, um, and we always have the choice to decide how much we do or don't do. And because we have so many planets in retrograde, because we are um, coming into cancer season, cancer is very much about self-care and nurturing. Uh, this card's really calling you to put down uh, quite a few things to find your happiness. That your value doesn't come from how much you do, how much you've done, how much you've accomplished. That happiness comes from kind of striking that balance between what feels good for you to do and what feels good to put things down for later. So that was the first card. The second card is the Queen of Cups, which is, in my opinion, very Cancerian uh, because, you know, Cancer is a feminine sign. It's a water sign. Got, she's surrounded by this little river, um, you know, uh, the femininity of the queen. Um, and so this is a time to receive. You know, uh, Queen of Cups to me is very similar to the Empress, which is very much this receiving energy. She's got her cup, you know, um, she's just holding her cup on her lap. Um, she's got these little angels around her. There's these little, little stars hanging from the clouds. And, oh, there's even an angel sitting right in front of her. I didn't even notice that. Um, and so she's just here to receive just open to receive whatever love happiness um joy um good things positivity um yeah she's just open to receive whatever you know and and there's so much positivity around you like there's so many things that you can choose to um collect evidence for why you can be happy why it's okay to be happy. Yes, things are crazy. Things are on fire. It feels like the whole world is falling apart. But where are you collecting evidence for that from? The news? What people tell you? Facebook posts? Instagram? Conspiracy theory accounts? <laughs> um, if you take a moment to just pause if you put down all the fears that you're carrying, all the things you're worried about, and you just kind of get still with the reality of what your life is, can you receive the good things in your life? Because this Queen of Cups is really calling you to do that. Can you receive the good things about you? And, you know, good things can range from, you know, um, the privilege of being financially secure they can range from having people around you that just really love you and support you. Um, having a safe place to live, you know, like uh, living in um, an area that maybe the news media says is, is going crazy, but you know, you go to the grocery store and it's fine, <laughs> you know, or um, just, yeah, can you just receive the gift of even just being alive? You know, if you're in a really dark place and it feels hard, you know, and you're looking for that happiness, um, you can collect evidence that because you are here, because you have biologically survived this long, that 
you know, you are deserving of love and happiness and abundance, that we live in a benevolent universe, and that because you are here, things are happening for your highest good to happen, even if it doesn't feel like that. So the third card I pulled for you for the happiness reading is the Ace of Pentacles. And so this guy he's a weird looking green cloud but there's a rainbow you know there's this coin um again as i've said in the other um readings pentacles are time energy money and that you know it, all these little positive i call them god rays um you know are coming out and that like it's safe to be happy like things are okay things are going to get better if they don't feel like they are okay right now everything is temporary you know, even this really amazing positive time. But that doesn't mean we have to shortchange it. To make a little money joke. Um, it doesn't mean that we have to shortchange it or cheapen it by worrying about when not so great things happen. Because everything is temporary. It's a cycle. But when this positivity comes in, you can enjoy it for as long as it's here and you should enjoy it for as long as it's here because it's come for a reason. It's come to give you a break, uh, whether that's financially, energetically, with time, just to shine a little extra light on you so you can, you know, like just enjoy your life. You could get some rest. You could just appreciate, you know, um, the, the glow of the sunlight. But, you know, good things are coming. Um, if they haven't come to you already. And then the oracle card that I pulled for the happiness reading is my super attractor power comes from how I feel, my faith and love, and the joy I put out. So to me what this card is saying is that you can attract whatever it is you want by cultivating that feeling inside of you. And so what does that even mean? Cultivating a feeling. Essentially, in my opinion, in my experience, cultivating a feeling is remembering what happiness feels like by calling up a memory of when you were really happy, of when something happened that like brought you a lot of happiness, whether that's like when you were a child, whether that's like the last time you got really drunk and laughed a bunch with your friends, whether that's, um, you know, a time that you went on a hike in a really beautiful place and it just made your heart feel so full. Um, but cultivating that emotion, like remembering a time that you felt really happy and allowing yourself to feel that feeling again is what attracts more of that to us. So your super attractor power comes from how you feel your faith and love, and the joy you put out. So that was the happiness reading. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I wanted to do something like a little bit lighter. Because um, I, I, I know we did like the eclipse reading. Um, and just things are kind of crazy. You know, and it is what it is. But um, things are also okay. And it's going to get better. And yeah, I hope you guys have a great Father's Day, all the dads out there um, and the grandpas. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the reading. Um, please feel free to share. Um, also, uh, if you would like to give me a like or subscribe, I would greatly appreciate that. So I hope that you guys have a great week ahead and I will see you later. Bye.